All right guys, welcome back to Our World Outdoors. So today, we came out, we did some walking in the woods here. It's just barely snowing. Real pretty day here on our property. But it got us thinking this morning that we're in the new year now and we're setting goals and setting up things and you know, just kind of looking at the year on the whole as what we want to do. And it gave us a moment to reflect on the fact that together, we have lost 100 pounds plus last year and part of our new goals for this year is just where we're going to go with our health and fitness and our weight loss journey but you know this was a 50 50 kind of thing because on one hand you've got diet what you eat and goes into your body is extremely important especially when it comes to getting in shape weight loss or maybe even just getting in better physical shape the other side of it is your exercise and when you put your exercise there it becomes hard to really beat like a steady state cardio, like a hiking, walking, and that was the main component we used to lose weight. Um, it really at the end there became more miles equals more calories burnt for us. So we kind of took it to more of an extreme. We did use a little weight training and some other things, which we'll talk about more at the end of the video, but those were just add-ons like electives to speed it up. So. For those of you that haven't been following along with it, the beginning of last year I set the goal that I was going to lose some weight and you joined in. Yes. And we decided that we were going to approach it by what we like to do, which was hiking and, and walking. You know, pace is the only change between the two to us. Um, mm -hmm. So the first part was our daily goal was uh, 10,000 steps. and getting a free app on your phone that will allow you to track your steps they're not perfect just like Fitbit's not perfect the Apple watch is not perfect they all just give you an idea of where you're at so you got to know that going in it's not exact but it gives you a great ideal and it never hurts to do just a little more if you're concerned that it's not doing it just like do not trust the calories it says you burned um, because some of them read as in body like it adds in the calories that just to keep you alive and your heart pumping and blood flowing. So not going to get into all that too much, but just don't really use the calories it says as a viewpoint on what you should eat. Simply put, you just need to get online, go to a calculator, figure out your cal calories daily you need, and then calculate that versus how much you burn an hour walking or hiking, whatever. But we set up ours at 10,000 steps a day just because it's the sweet spot that we had enough time to do throughout our normal day and we weren't heavily exhausted the next day. Now, you did it a little different than me because I was lucky enough that around work in the evenings and with the dogs, I could do it around here around the property. Um, and you joined me some evenings, but most of your steps you got at a different place. I did a lot of mine during my breaks at work and during lunch at work. So I would take things for lunch that I could eat while I was uh, walking or I just took my breaks and I would make sure that I went out and walked every day on all my breaks. Now you also got a good portion of them just walking around at your job and around the house mm -hmm. at night or doing, doing chores after work. And then if I needed to finish up any, then I'd walk to the mailbox or whatever, just as long as I maintained that. Yeah, and we had on the weekends, we had hiking trips we did, and we'd be running 20,000 days on the weekend. So if you had one day during the week that you didn't make it. Then you should be able to make it up on the weekend. Yeah. Which is why you've seen some of our longer trips that we ended up doing some longer miles on. That was just because we wanted to offset our week for our walking. Yeah, I mean, you may have like two days that the weather was absolutely terrible and we didn't get our steps. So we just make them up on the weekend. And you got to look at it like that. Don't don't get defeated because you had a week of bad weather. I mean, it's the middle of winter. Now, we also did hinge our bets, though, and did pick up a used treadmill off of uh, Facebook. Facebook. I yeah, think. for like a hundred bucks. I mean, I don't well, I don't even think we paid that for it. No, we didn't. But anyways, we got we got a used treadmill. And that gives us the ability that if it's like really bad out, like the worst case scenario, we can get our steps inside. So we still pursue our 10,000 steps a day. We do plan on this summer pushing that up just to do the finishing touches to now, get rid of some weight. The one thing that I want to say is we kept our steps or our cardio 
separate from our calories. So a lot of apps want to combine the two together. We didn't do that because we wanted to maintain the, keep our calories at what we needed to be for weight loss. And then we consider our cardio just as bonus. Yeah. So we kept them separate by getting online. There's a million free calculators and you just got to find your basal metabolic rate, your B, your basal metabolic rate basically is whatever you need calorie wise for your height, your age, your size, all these factors and it contributes and tells you how many calories you need just to be alive every day. Just, just the normal human thing for the size. If you eat those calories or less and then you go out and hike, you're in a calorie deficit. It's that simple. It's, that's all it takes. Once you're in the calorie deficit, what happens is you start to lose weight. Now, there's other points on this we're going to get into more in this video, but that's the basic, simplest way to go. Mm -hmm. Now, if we had times that we seem to plateau or stop, since we're discussing the hiking part of it, we would go do a big trip. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, that's just we would just go, <laughs> go bang out some miles. You know, you want to get in shape, you want to, you want to increase your fitness so you can backpack and stuff, go do it. But go it was walk. an enjoyable increase in exercise. Yeah, don't. That's don't, my thing. Don't take it so far that you're not having fun anymore. That'll instantly make you not want to get up and go do it. But the the increase in the miles and stuff, you know, a lot of people don't want to go out and do massive miles, and that's fine. But you just have to make sure you're getting your allotment of hiking or walking or whatever in, in order to continue to your health or fitness goals. Now that said, we can start talking about diet now because if it really could come to the fact where you could probably do 5,000 steps a day, as long as your diet's in check, it'll just slow down how fast it goes. And when it came to diet, we had a real simple approach. We didn't want to be restrictive because we've done keto, we've done carnivore, we've done uh, low carb, we've done uh, high carb, we've done a version of like Atkins. Yeah, I mean we've done so many diets and none of them stuck. And the reality is, is it's not so much. It's more about the volume you eat and how many calories is in volume than it is about anything else. So we basically eat whatever you would eat, but we just eat it in different portion control sizes and look for foods that are low calorie but take up a lot of space. Um, so if instead of going out and having a eight or 10 ounce steak, we would take an eight ounce steak, split it between us, each have three or four ounces of steak and have that on top of a salad that also has a lot of spinach in it. Mm -hmm. Instead of going to BW3s and having like a thousand calories worth of wings we made we cauliflower have the wings. famous cauliflower wings <laughs> gretchen's cauliflower wings the ones i always ask for after every trip because those buffalo wings are delicious they're breaded and like a huge portion and a huge salad this big is like 300 calories and you are stuffed when you're done we have a video on that i think on how to make this that's over on the homestead channel oh. but yes the the trick about it is though eat foods that are low in calorie but have lots of volume they'll fill you up like most of last year i had my bowl of ice cream ice cream is my my thing so i would either do the protein ice cream yep or i would eat regular light ice cream and as long as you do it by the portion and actually measure it out two-thirds of a cup is 140 calories there was no reason why I could not have my ice cream every night yeah and it wasn't expensive either don't try and go buy all these crazy low-carb expensive ice creams I'm talking the big industrial like gallon size you know the gallon or whatever light it is Walmart brand yeah just light ice cream it's like 4.99 for a, a big old thing it's bigger than a gallon no it's one gallon but anyways you get that you measure out two-thirds and then we'd put some sugar-free syrup over it it's like eight or 10 calories, or, I think. Yeah. Or we use PB Fit, which is a powdered peanut butter and mix it with some water and make a chocolate, you know, I mean, not a chocolate, but a peanut butter drizzle for it. Or you put both and you got Reese's. <laughs> it tastes like Reese's. And then you'll find a lot of the things we were eating is over on our Homestead channel, like the protein ice cream, the protein powder based uh, cupcakes, cake, you know, your bagels. protein bagels, yes. 
So we found options and then we also kind of baked some of our own goods, but it's as simple as going to the store and finding at Walmart the pitas that are, what are those, 60 calorie, mm -hmm. 50 calorie. You know, you take those, cut them in half, and instead of using buns for your hamburgers, stick your hamburgers in those. It's small changes that make the difference. You know? And it doesn't have to be, we need to talk about the cost. It, it wasn't extremely expensive. I mean, I don't think we were paying any more in our grocery bill now than what we did then. Technically, technically it's probably less because before we were eating a bunch of meat. And now we eat a more moderate amount of meat and the sides, which are cheaper, because meat is your most expensive part when you go to the store other than sugary and salty snacks. And we have way less trash going to the landfill. Lot less trash, tons less trash. Cause nothing's boxed really. So. Yeah, we don't, we don't really have a lot of the box stuff, but it, it's also as simple as tracking the calories. There is a hundred free services and free apps you can use. You have no excuse not to track your calories. All right, tracking your calories will tell you what you're eating so you know. A lot of apps do even the ma uh, macros and everything, which we didn't pay as much attention to, but. Nope, because it, it's just as simple as go and eat this amount of calories. If you eat this amount of calories, you will lose weight. If you stop losing weight after a period of time, you would either need to dial those calories slightly down, say 100 calories at a shot, or go out and do more exercise weekly. That Up. simple. It's that, that's, and there's, there's no quick fix diets. There's no pills. There's no nothing. It is literally put in the work, eat the right amount and be done. And you can go out and eat Whoppers. I mean, if we went out and did that hike and ate all the calories back out, eating freaking a whole bunch of Whoppers. So we just always did a big hike right before we decided to do something crazy. Yeah. If you want to go out and have a little Caesar's pizza, let's say, go hike about three or four miles, then eat it. So how many calories would you say you were eating a day before we started tracking last year? Probably three or 4,000 because I was on an all meat diet. I think I was probably eating three or 4,000. Okay. And what was our calories supposed to be at? Mine should have been at 1800 or less to maintain. Yep. And mine's supposed to be at about 22 to 2,500 to just maintain, which means stay the same weight. So, so I eat way over. Yeah. But to put it in perspective for you, the largest coffee, the grande, big old coffee thing, most of those frou frou coffees at Starbucks that's got all the syrups and stuff in them, they were as much as her calories for the day are for the largest size. 1,800 calories in one drink. Now that brings us to there is a sugar free alternative to almost everything you can think of anymore. All right. There's Mountain Dew Zero. There's all kinds of zero pops. So there's mm -hmm. that. And they taste almost like they taste way better than diet. Put it that way. There's chocolate, sugar free chocolate Hershey's. Mm -hmm. There is sugar free coffee creamers. Mm -hmm. There's Stevia. We bake with stevia, so you can use that for everything. Sugar-free jello, sugar-free pudding. Or even if you use trivia, that's very low. Yeah, that's that's a cane version too, so that's even healthier. But there's, there's sugar-free products for everything now. So even if you just took your normal system and rotate those in, that automatically will help you start losing weight. You'd be amazed the calories you'd cut just in switching those things. And if somebody was to come up to me and say, well, I don't get to eat enough, I'm hungry, then you're doing it wrong. Honestly, you're doing then you it wrong. you need to start adding other things that have more volume with less calories. Because if you came and tried to eat my 2000 calorie diet, every one of you would groan halfway and say your belly hurts. Because I, I cannot eat his 2000 calorie diet. No. I can't eat the volume of food that he eats. Because I'll have a container this big, like four times a day, that's like salad and rice and salsa and sour, uh, low calorie sour cream, fat free cheese Maybe and some kind of meat. of meat, you know, be it chicken or whatever, but I'll eat two or three of those a day. There's no way I could eat that. So I have to adjust mine and eat a little bit less volume, mm -hmm. but eat low calories. And which... you got to weigh it out. You got to measure it out. So you know the correct calories so you can log it into your phone. But it's more than just us too. I mean, we've had friends who's did the same thing this year 
that just track their calories and stuff and they have lost a ton of weight and when you get to chasing your daily steps and and really getting into a good solid system then the results come i know brandy from time out the trail has been really hammering some miles down every day religiously and doing some yoga and she's got results going i know brenda brenda and mike, brenda and mike are hammering it out them mike's two. up to losing i think he's lost 91 pounds now Jeez, man i mean but this just shows it works and it's sustainable you can keep doing it don't go on a diet and you're like oh i'm gonna do this diet and 90 percent of the stuff in the fitness market today they're just trying to get your money it's it's a scam it may work short term i know people that are doing carnivore and keto and i they're doing great and i'm glad for them and some people that will work for but the mass majority of people cannot sustain that long term if i told you you could go eat an ice cream sundae every night for 140 calories with peanut butter or chocolate on it that's sustainable that's something you can continue to do and it's something you can buy right off the shelf it's not like it's hard to get or you got to make anything i mean it's right there so don't make it hard on yourself make it as easy as possible and you will then achieve the goals now with that said what do you want going forward my goal this year is to lose another 20 pounds that's a lot but i'm gonna do it okay and how are you gonna, gonna happen how are you gonna achieve that goal um so i have been doing maintenance calories for the last two months and this is a recovery thing um, which we should probably should touch on we just when you're losing weight especially large amounts you do it too long your body will just kind of freeze up and be like that's enough so if you give it a chance to rest which we've done throughout the holidays even though we didn't overeat we kind of let our bodies just relax put our calories back up to maintenance and just relax for a while it let our bodies kind of reset and now they're ready to go again and into the new year we'll start decreasing our calories and upping our cardio and go again it just helps you so that your body can have a break it needs a break every now and again so so i'm going to drop my calories back down from my maintenance of 1600 i'm going to drop it back down um, probably 1400 starting off and then maybe 50 every month or two but i'm going to rotate like i'll drop my calories down and then I will increase my activity when I plateau and then I'll drop my calories down a little bit and then I'll increase my activity and just kind of go back and forth. Now, I'm going to take and up my cardio and leave my calories where they're at for the moment. And then I will slowly decrease once I find out how much time I have to be able to do cardio on a constant basis. I will also be doing a lot more weekend cardio as I get busier as the summer goes on spring goes on but we have goals for hiking too um to hit more places with more elevation for more calorie burn so that also is going to be a contributing factor because if you're hiking something like this you're burning way more calories than hiking something like this now extra things we do to burn calories a lot of people will say you did it with this you did it with that towards the end here we started getting into jump ropes um that burns crazy amounts of calories in a very short period of time and time was of the essence so that was one of the things we do we do a three-day split that takes all of about 10 minutes with weights mm -hmm. it literally takes no time at all but it's all pretty much compound movements and it's all movements that are you don't need any kind of real equipment you know i mean the basic squat deadlift clean and press you know abdominal work not because we want our abs like we think that that's going to like target belly fat it's just to strengthen our core so we can sit up straight and our backs when we carry our pack it helps make our backs not hurt as bad because your core is supporting your front weight but just basic movements you can do with dumbbells at home if you got a bench it helps but you know we don't get crazy we don't go to the gym and spend hours in there which we is don't buy a gym membership our son has a gym membership and he spends like an hour or two in there and then come home and eats what he wants and thinks <laughs> why am i not getting ripped so that can just tell you how diet is how important diet is so we also added in cycling mountain biking so we bought some mountain bikes cheapies and we go ride at like uh hawk hawk and adena we're gonna ride some at black hand gorge this year but basically what it is is some days we don't have the time frame to go do six hours of hiking 
So we go do two hours of riding a bike and staying on it, like going pretty quick and constantly being engaging and keep it in gears where it's hard. And that gives us the same burn that it would take for the hours of hiking. So if you're a person that has limited time looking to get you a cheap bike and getting on it some. And what do we hope to add this year? Oh, well, a lot of stuff we do engages our legs. And what we're looking at is maybe getting into some kayaking for some upper body or even maybe doing some rowing and other things of that nature. So, you know, as with anything, this is an outdoors channel. So you're going to be seeing us doing all these things too on our channel. We're not going to just limit to hiking and backpacking, even though that's the, the large majority of our content. But this, it's not, guys, this is not hard. It's not. You just got to make small starts. And if you don't do nothing other than just get rid of the sugary snacks somewhat when you're not out burning crazy calories on the trail, you're going to see huge differences. You don't even have to try. I'm telling you, go get you a sugar-free creamer. Start there. You know, when you get ready to have a piece of pie, have a half a piece of pie or go get you a healthy version for your dessert like we did at 100 and some calories. You know, it doesn't take much. Small things can make huge differences. So you did 45, <laughs> I did about 60 some. So, you know, it's doable guys and it's maintainable. Don't be hungry, don't do crazy diets, don't pay for insane amounts of stuff. Get you a good protein shake, you know, get some good protein powder you can cook with. Go check out our Frugal Homestead channel, links down in the description. We've got all kinds of little recipes and little hacks to make it so yummy stuff. Use your air fryer, use your Instapot, stay away from oils, and we will see you up the trail. Nice one. Almost got her. Whoa, whoa. Well, I think we're a lot lower in the picture now. <laughs>